Smart Golf Solutions is a company that funds up and up and coming young European tour talent. We launched a company called Smart Golf Solutions um, about 18 months ago. Right. Uh, we saw there was a gap in the market to help um, young professionals coming through the ranks uh, via the um, the feeder tours, as we call them. So you've got like Euro Pro, Alps Tour, etc. And <clears throat> one thing we found that was happening was um, there was guys that were qualifying for European Tour every year, um, and they weren't they weren't taking advantage of that um, of that qualification. Um, so therefore, they were passing the card, and it was it was just purely down to the funding factor. Yeah, but even the first couple of years on the European Tour, I struggled to keep my card, and and financially, yeah, it was, it was tricky. I mean, we we spend a lot of money out here, and it's a huge help for a company to come in and and fund these young golfers. And um, you know, I think it's something the tour's needed for a long time. Hence, we set up. Uh, a company that um, gave them some funding and allowed them to do the travel that they needed to do um, and pay for expenses for hotels etc um, and uh, all that we wanted back in return was a percentage of their on-course earnings. Um, what we did which was different to most uh, companies that have tried this in the past we made it as fair as we possibly could uh, by capping the returns for one which no one's kind of done and we did sliding scale as well so the more they earned the less they paid us back. If you want a, if you want a good caddy it's it's you know you can pay a thousand pounds a week um, you know and you've got your hotel costs you know they're never cheap you know because we're playing you know in some really expensive countries you know we have a lot of long haul flights nowadays as well so they're they're an extra expense uh, i mean you know you can comfortably rack up a hundred thousand pounds even as a, a young player coming out on tour and and you know we all know to, to raise that in sponsorship you've got to be a serious talent and you know there's not many guys out here can raise that sort of money so it, it's just a huge help i spend most of my time looking at stats and and i suppose yeah, I look at the past 10 years and how things have, have kind of come on, how, th how figures have worked out and it's a formula, it's, it's obviously, it's not a miracle formula, you know, there's obviously some risk there, however, I feel that I've got, you know, enough know-how to kind of see what the pattern is and, and see who does what year in, year out. We look at, uh, on Challenge Tour, um, the percentage of guys that keep their card first year is slightly higher than guys that come from Q School, but we've, we've noticed the trend is that the guys that come from Q School, not all of them play on the Tour. They use the Challenge Tour category and play a full year on Challenge Tour instead of taking advantage of that European Tour card that they've got. Already over the last 10 years there's been sort of one or two guys that I've really rated who just don't play anymore and I think you know the main reason is because they've got a family back home they don't come from a wealthy background and it's it's really tricky to keep going out here when you've you, you know you're sort of burdened with this financial pressure and um, you know to take that away from any golfer is is a huge thing and I think that's how a, a golfer goes from being a an average tour player to a great tour player just by being financially secure and it just offers that chance. Mm -hmm.